Hello, everyone. Hope you are having a very good day. Today, we are going to start a series on the lectures of petroleum and crude oil. Our first lecture will be on the origin of petroleum. So let's start. First of all, we will study the theories of origin of petroleum. The origin of petroleum still has uncertainties. Despite the tremendous researches and studies devoted to it, rather than any other natural substance, there are two different theories for the origin of petroleum, organic theory and inorganic theory. We will study both theories in this lecture. First of all is organic theory. The organic theory holds that the first stage of genesis of petroleum involves plankton, which are single-celled organisms that float on the ocean. They said these die and gradually accumulate on the ocean floor. Other sediments start accumulating too and after a few million years, the plankton are buried under several kilometers of sediments, as you can see here. Okay. The plankton, which have remained unoxidized under the increased value of pressure and temperature, are now transformed into keratin. Under favorable condition of time and temperature, this keratin, after further burial and heating, is transformed via cracking into petroleum and natural gas. These then migrate towards the surface and end up either reaching it or being arrested on the way in traps. Uh, in our next lecture, we will study what is migration of petroleum and what are traps. Right now, we will only focus on our organic theory. There are a number of compelling reasons that support an organic development hypothesis. First and foremost is the carbon-hydrogen organic matter connection. Carbon and hydrogen are the primary constituents of organic material, both plant and animal. Moreover, carbon, hydrogen, and hydrocarbons are continually produced by the life processes of plants and animals. A major breakthrough occurred when it was discovered that hydrocarbons and re related compounds occur in many living organisms and are deposited in the sediments with little to no change. Like this, animals die and due to lack of oxygen, they don't get oxidized completely. Here, after millions of millions of years ago, they converted to petroleum. This is the basic simplest headline of organic theory. Second were observations dealing with the chemical characteristics of petroleum reservoirs. Nitrogen and porphyrins, porphyrins are actually chlorophyll derivatives in plants and blood derivatives in animals are found in all organic matter and they are also found in petroleum. Presence of porphyrins also mean that anaerobic conditions must have developed early in life uh, in the formation process because porphyrins are easily and rapidly oxidized and decompose under aerobic conditions. Additionally, when low oxygen content also implies a reducing environment, thus there is a high probability that petroleum originates within an anaerobic and reducing environment, means in the absence of oxygen. Third, well, uh, observations dealing with the physical characteristics and nearly all petroleum occurs in sediments that are primary, uh, primarily of marine origin, like this. It says that nearly uh, petroleum contained in non-marine sediments probably migrated into the areas of marine source materials located nearby. Furthermore, temperatures in the deeper petroleum reservoirs seldom exceed 141 degrees Celsius, but temperature never exceed 200 degrees Celsius where porphyrins are present because they are destroyed above this temperature. Therefore, the origin of petroleum is most likely a low temperature phenomena. Finally, time requirements may be less than 100 million years. This is based on more recent oil discoveries. However, physical conditions on the Earth may have been different in the past, and therefore it may have taken considerably more time to develop liquid petroleum. Uh, in the next slide, we will study what are the supporting points of organic theory. The following points have been considered as supporting the biological theory. First of all, since it is known that hydrocarbons can be produced by photosynthesis, it is natural to expect petroleum to be of an organic origin. It was obvious. 
Molecules thought to be of biological origin, for example, porphyrins and isoprenoids, are also found in petroleum, thereby providing support for the organic theory. These are actually in support for the organic theory. Third one. The organic carbon in plant is depleted in carbon-13 due to the process of photosynthesis. In dead organic material, the carbon-13 is further depleted due to radioactive decay. Since it was found that most petroleum and natural gas show the same depletion, it was viewed as a strong proof in the favor of organic origin. Fourth one, sediments are the most important host rocks yielding petroleum. Uh, for example, the oil produced from oil wells is generally obtained from a porous sandstone deep below. Often sediments are associated with biological material that could have acted as a source of petroleum. And number fifth, uh, five is the existence of large quantities of oil shale from which a hydrocarbon mix similar to petroleum could be distilled was seen as a support in favor of an organic origin. This followed easily since the oil shale was taken to be the carbon source rock, which on sufficient burial purportedly yielded petroleum. But these are not only the supporting points, there are some supporting points and there are some opposing points of the organic theory. Next, we will study what are the uh, opposing points of the organic theory. The following observations go against the organic theory. Uh, the discovery that meteoroids contain hydrocarbons came as a great blow to supporting point number one and two of organic theory. Porphyrins and isoprenoids have been found in meteoroids too. In addition, the outer planets contain large amount of hydrocarbons, specifically methane. Methane has a formula CH4. The concentration of oil in the Middle East implies that the region must have been exceptionally prolific in plant and animal life over long periods of Earth's history. But this is unlikely, since life tends to be more dispersed even today. And number third is uh, methane occurs in giant ocean rifts in incontinental rifts and the lakes that occur nearby. Uh, for example, dissolved in the waters of the East African Lake Kivu as a methane hydrates in permafrost and in active volcanic and mud volcanic region, as well as great depths of more than 10 kilometers as geopressured gas, etc. A biological origin for this methane can be virtually ruled out. Okay, so uh, this was the basic opposing points of the organic theory, organic origin theory of petroleum. Next, we will move on to the inorganic theory. According to the inorganic theory, inorganic theory of the origin of the petroleum states that hydrogen and carbon came together under a great temperature and pressure and uh, fall below the Earth's surface and formed oil and gas. It means here. And what happens next is the oil and gas then seep through porous rocks to deposit in various natural underground traps. They seep through here, 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 and uh, get trapped in traps. We will study traps uh, soon. And uh, some come to the surface. As early as 16th century, one theory of the origin of oil claimed that it resulted from deep carbon deposits that have been around for longer in life on this planet. This theory, which came to be known as the abiotic of oil formation theory, was largely forgotten until rather recently when a few people reviewed it again. Okay, there are many theories uh, that are of inorganic origins. One of the most accepted theory is metacarpite theory. Uh, the founder of the non-organic theory was Mendeleev, the Russian chemist who proposed the modern version of the periodic table. Most of you might remember this. In 1877, he wrote that the petroleum deposits of the world seem to be controlled more by large-scale tectonic features. Tectonic features, you, you may remember some kind of earthquakes from these tectonics word. Tectonic features done by the ages of sedimentary rocks. Um, to explain these observations, he put forth the metal carbide theory. Uh, in this model, metal carbides deep within the earth react with water at high temperatures. This is metal carbide. It reacts with water to form acetylene. It is acetylene 
uh, and this is calcium hydroxide subsequently condensed to form heavier hydrocarbons uh, it says that the calcium uh, metal carbides like this react with water to form acetylene and acetylene then combine together with each other to form heavier hydrocarbons this was a basis of uh, inorganic origin theory of petroleum However, there are many other theories of uh, inorganic origin of petroleum. These include earthquake theory, volcanic theory, nebular condensation theory. Uh, in, the, uh, in the volcanic theory, this postulate involves outgassing of the mantle via volcanic activity. Nebular condensation theory says uh, that his theory was, uh, it was actually proposed by Skolov in 1890. Uh, let me write here. Sorry, I have a mouse and I don't write well. 1890 by Skolov, Sokolov, I guess. S O K O L O double F. I am terrible at writing with mouse. In 1890 by Sokolov, uh, he proposed a cosmic origin here. Cosmic origin. Okay. His theory was one of hydrocarbons precipitated as rain from original nebular matter from which the solar system was formed and then ejected from Earth's interior onto surface rock. This theory is also known as extraterrestrial hypothesis. Um, and the earthquake theory, theory. This theory involves outcasting deep Earth's mantle via tectonic activities such as falls, and this is still happening now. Uh, uh, what I want to share is I specifically write it here, wrote it here. A renewed interest to the inorganic mode of origin by others was caused by two discoveries. The two main things here: what caused the inorganic theories uh, to be raised. First was <clears throat> existence of carbonaceous chondrites, meteoroids, and the second was the discovery that atmosphere containing methane exists for some celestial bodies such as Saturn, Titan, Jupiter, etc. The only source for methane is through inorganic reactions. It has been postulated that the original atmosphere Earth contained methane, ammonia, hydrogen, and water vapor in the past. The discovery of a type of meteoroid called carbonaceous chondrites here, also led to a renewed interest in an inorganic mechanism for creating organic compounds. Chondritic meteoroids contain greater than 6% of organic content. 6% uh, of organic content and traces of various hydrocarbons, including amino acids. The chief support of an inorganic origin is that hydrocarbons like methane and ethane and acetylene have repeatedly been made from inorganic sources. For example, congealed magma has been found on the Kola Panzola in Russia containing gaseous liquid hydrocarbons and contains almost 90% of uh, methane, propane, and isobutane, and paraffinic hydrocarbons have also been found in other igneous rocks. Next, we will study the evidences for inorganic origin and some opposing points of inorganic origin. Uh, first of all, the major oil fields of the world. Y you need to concentrate on this. The major oil fields, major oil fields of the world are concentrated on, on or near belts of major tectonic activity. Where there is more tectonic activity, oil fields are near them. Or in fact, along fault zones. Mm -hmm. Some of the phenomenal Arabian fields, the world's largest petroleum province, lie along the Persian Zagros Mount Belt. The large North Sea reserves that have been made much of North Europe self-sufficient in all production like a North Sea Trench. The oil fields of Indonesia and Burma closely follow the seismic belt running from New Guinea and to Burma, while the oil fields of Gujarat appear to be associated with the Kampai Fault. Hydrocarbons are found in the Red Sea Rift Valley and the East African Rift and the Eastern Branch of the Pacific Rift. These and many other examples that exist should illustrate the association of hydrocarbons with large deep-seated cracks in the Earth's crust. 
rather than any local sediments. However, note that the idea of deep seated cracks may also be required to explain the migration of petroleum because petroleum can migrate from one place to another uh, within the organic theory. And uh, secondly, is that uh, sorry, according to the non organic theory, petroleum should occur universally in areas of tectonic activity. This does not appear to hold true, and this seems to be a problem for the non organic theory. Uh, next, we will discuss what are the problems with inorganic theory. The first is there is no direct evidence that will show whether uh, the source of organic material in the chondritic meteoroids is the result of a truly inorganic origin or was in an original parent material which was originally which was organically created. We don't have direct evidence of this. Similar reasoning applies to other celestial bodies. Second is, there is no fair evidence that inorganic processes have occurred in nature. There is no evidence. Yet, there is mounting evidence for an organic origin. Okay, so uh, it was all the basics uh, of the origin of petroleum. If you have any question or any problem with that, please feel free to ask me in the comment section. And uh, if you want to take one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions with me please do contact me on preplay i provide one-on-one -on -one tutoring session at just five dollar per hour you can discuss your class plans or whatever the subject or sorry, whatever the topic you're facing difficulty you can text me we can talk about it and we can plan a lesson you can book trial lessons first before uh, booking an entire month or buying entire month subscriptions and uh, lastly, I want to say thank you very much for watching and uh, please do appreciate if you like my video, just like and subscribe. Thank you very much once again.